ULA used to be one of the most reliable rocket companies in the world. For years, they dominated government launches because they were extremely good at their job. If the U.S. government had a high-value satellite that absolutely could not fail, ULA was usually the company that got the contract. Their rockets were expensive, but they worked. That reputation allowed them to secure almost every major national security launch for a long time. But now everything has changed. In recent years, when people hear about ULA, it is no longer only about success. More often, it is about launch delays, engine issues, or missed timelines. And now, something even worse has happened. The CEO who led the company for 12 years has just resigned. When a company's CEO steps down after more than a decade, especially during a critical period, it usually means something very serious is happening inside the company. In this video, we are going to break down what is going on at ULA, what problems led to this moment, and why the future does not look very bright right now. Before we go any deeper, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future updates on what's happening in the space industry. Just a few hours ago, ULA confirmed that CEO Tori Bruno resigned after leading the company for about 12 years. Official statements always try to keep things calm, but CEO resignations like this do not happen randomly. When you look at the situation ULA is in right now, this decision starts to make sense. To understand the problem, you need to look at how ULA operated in the past. ULA was created in 2006 by Boeing and Lockheed Martin to combine their rocket programs and dominate government launches. For a long time, this worked extremely well. Atlas V and Delta IV became known for reliability. Launches often cost more than $150 million and sometimes much more, but the government paid because failure was not an option. Then SpaceX entered the picture and changed everything. Falcon 9 introduced reusability and pushed launch prices down to around $62 million. At first, ULA argued that SpaceX missions were not comparable. Early on, that argument had some truth. But over time, Falcon 9 kept flying successfully again and again. Reliability was no longer exclusive to ULA. SpaceX started winning more contracts, including national security missions that ULA once controlled almost entirely. This forced ULA into a corner. Their rockets were aging, expensive, and dependent on foreign engines. Atlas V relied on the Russian engine, and political pressure made it clear that using Russian engines for U.S. national security launches was no longer acceptable. That meant Atlas V had to be retired whether ULA was ready or not. Delta IV was even more expensive and was also nearing retirement. ULA had no choice. They needed a new rocket, and that rocket was Vulcan. Vulcan was not just another launch vehicle. It was meant to replace both Atlas V and Delta IV at the same time. It was supposed to lower costs, remove dependence on Russian engines, and keep ULA competitive with SpaceX. That is an enormous amount of responsibility for a single rocket program. Developing Vulcan was extremely expensive. Estimates place development costs between $5 billion and $7 billion, with roughly another $1 billion spent on launch pads, ground systems, and infrastructure. This was a massive investment for a company that launches far less frequently than its main competitor. Vulcan also introduced a new risk. Its main engine, the BE-4, is built by Blue Origin, not ULA. That means ULA does not fully control its engine supply. Any delay at Blue Origin directly becomes a delay for Vulcan. In the current launch market, delays are deadly. Vulcan took longer than expected to reach operational readiness. This created serious pressure. The U.S. government does not wait forever. If a launch provider cannot meet schedules, missions get reassigned. SpaceX, with its high launch rate, is always available. Financial pressure followed. Under national security launch contracts awarded since 2020, ULA received about $4.5 billion, while SpaceX received around $4 billion. The next round of contracts raised the stakes even more. Under the latest national security launch awards, ULA was assigned 19 missions worth about $5.3 billion. SpaceX received 28 missions worth around $5.9 billion. 
ULA is still in the game, but the gap is growing. And contracts only matter if the company can execute them smoothly. Execution is where ULA is having big problems. SpaceX launches frequently. It reuses boosters and recovers quickly from delays. ULA operates at a slower pace. That was acceptable when the market was slow. It is much harder now when customers expect speed. And this is where the gap between SpaceX and ULA has turned into something much bigger than just competition. SpaceX is not only taking business away from ULA, it is reshaping the entire launch market and dominating it at a global level. To understand how extreme this shift is, you have to look at the numbers. In 2023, SpaceX launched 98 times. That same year, the total number of orbital launches worldwide was around 222. This means SpaceX alone accounted for roughly 44% of all orbital launches on Earth. One private company, nearly half of the entire planet's launch activity. ULA, by comparison, flew only a handful of missions that year. The gap was already massive and it was growing fast. Then came 2024 and SpaceX pushed even harder. In that year, SpaceX completed about 134 launches. Global orbital launches reached around 259. That puts SpaceX at roughly 52% of all launches worldwide. More than half of the planet's access to orbit was handled by a single company. At this point, SpaceX was no longer just competing with other companies. It was competing with entire countries. Now look at 2025, and the situation becomes even more extreme. The global launch count is around 311 orbital launches. SpaceX is on track for around 170 launches in a single year. That is roughly 55% of all orbital launches worldwide. This means that more than every second rocket going to orbit belongs to SpaceX. At this pace, SpaceX is launching almost twice every week. Sometimes there are launches only a few days apart, sometimes even back-to-back -back within the same week. This is not something the industry was built for. It is a completely new rhythm. And launch frequency is not just about numbers. It is about experience. Every launch is real data, real weather, real range coordination, real payload integration, real countdown pressure. When you launch 170 times a year, you gain operational experience that other companies simply cannot match. Problems get discovered faster. Fixes get tested faster. Processes get refined faster. This creates a feedback loop that no slow-moving company can keep up with. Booster reuse is the core reason SpaceX can operate at this scale. While ULA discards its first stages after every flight, SpaceX treats its boosters like reusable hardware. They fly, land, get inspected, and fly again. And this is not just reuse once or twice. SpaceX has proven extreme reuse is possible. In early 2025, a single Falcon 9 booster completed its 25th flight. The same physical rocket stage went to space and came back 25 times. That is not a theory. That is operational reality. This changes everything about cost and scheduling. SpaceX does not need to build a brand new first stage for every mission. That means lower production pressure, lower cost per launch, and more flexibility when schedules shift. If a launch slips due to weather or payload readiness, SpaceX usually has another booster available. ULA does not have that luxury. When ULA slips, the delay often cascades. Landing capability plays a huge role as well. SpaceX does not only land boosters back at the launch site. Very often, they land them on drone ships stationed in the ocean. These drone ships, named Just Read the Instructions, Of Course I Still Love You and A Shortfall of Gravitas, allow SpaceX to recover boosters even on high-energy missions. This means SpaceX can fly heavier payloads, reach more demanding orbits, and still reuse the hardware. That combination is extremely powerful. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.